Greetings, this is Sarah Rushlow on behalf of Baker Hunt's Art and Cultural Center here to bring you another fun and exciting art tutorial. Today we are going to draw a wave with a mountain in the distance. And this drawing is partially inspired by printmaker Rokusai's The Great Wave of Kanagawa. I apologize to anyone who speaks Japanese. I'm sure I just ruined that pronunciation. First thing we're going to do is we're going to gather our materials. So I've got a ultra fine point Sharpie, thick Sharpie, thick black Sharpie. Then I have some washable markers. You can use markers, pens, pencils, whatever you're comfortable with. Now, if I'm just going to go ahead and draw with my Sharpie. If you want to use pencil first and outline everything in pencil and then erase it, you can. I'm just going to go for it. So I'm going to draw a little half circle, like a little valley, on my paper. And starting at the end of that valley, I'm going to draw a hill that goes up, 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 up. curves over, and stops. So I'm just going to draw a hill. Now I'm going to take into that hill and I'm going to curve back on itself a little bit. So there's a little hook at the end of that hill. And then I'm going to go to the tip of that hook. And then I'm going to draw another hook that goes in the opposite direction. The base of that first hook I'm going to draw another hook, then another, smaller hook, larger hook, if I want to go in here and add another hook, I can. If I want to add a bigger hook, I can. Totally up to you. Keep going on those hooks. It's okay if your wave doesn't look like my wave. No two waves look the same. The real thing is to get that shape. So now I'm at the bottom of my wave. And that little half circle at the bottom. I'm going to have it go up into another hill, but instead of ending in a hook, I'm just going to do a little hill, an even smaller hill underneath. Then I'm going to have another valley that go up to another hill, but end in another hook for the little wave. Same thing. Gonna add hooks. Then have a line that curves off the page. Important to have everything kind of curvy. Now, around this little hill right here, I'm gonna start a curve that curves back the opposite way from the wave goes underneath it and stops underneath those hooks. Do the same thing with this little guy here. Now in the background, I'm going to give, I want there to be a little mountain. So I'm going to draw another set of hills, smaller this time. Does that continue on? Gonna add some snow peaks, so some little wedge patterns that go all the way around the summit of that mountain. Maybe your mountain doesn't have snow on it, but I wanted mine too. All right then. So now I'm gonna go in, 
I'm going to fill in the blue of those waves. I'm going to get collect my colors I want to use. So dark blue, light blue, a teal or turquoise color. And I'm going to start with my dark blue. And I'm just going to draw a stripe in the back corner of that wave. Draw a stripe. And I'm going to fill all the area behind that stripe in dark blue. I'm going to outline the area, solid color, and then I'm going to start filling it in. Draw another line. When you outline the area with a solid color that helps, that creates a buffer. So it's harder to paint over your lines. If you enjoyed this drawing tutorial and would like to have more art lessons, please check out Baker Hunt Art and Cultural Center's website at bakerhunt.com. I have a new set of classes up there. One is a beginner's origami class and the other is a class called Brush and Beyond 2. Please feel free to check those out. Sign up if you're interested. And more art activities that you will not find here. I'm going to keep alternating between light blue and dark blue. Notice I went ahead and I filled in a small area up here because the idea is that this part of the way of the dark blue part is underneath the foam. If you put a little bit of light blue peeking through, it's going to look more like that foam is in part of this dark um, in front of the dark blue of the wave. Try to make sure your strokes are all going in the same direction. It's always nice to have a nice curve to them as well. So that's the big wave. Now you can go in and do the little wave. Oh. One other thing. So down here in the little place where the wave's starting to swell, you're going to draw some wedge shapes, but you're going to have the ends of those wedges curve a little bit. So you can start here. Kind of look like stalactites or stalagmites. mites. 
I'm going to fill this area in just the way you would your other wave. Last but not least, that little wave. So the big one. One thing about this painting to remember is that when you're drawing something, even if it seems really complicated, it may not be as complicated as it looks. Try to figure out smaller parts of it. Try to figure out what what smaller parts it might be, try to break it down into smaller parts and use that to draw. It's not so overwhelming. All right then, so now that we've drawn our wave, let's draw our sky real quick. Now when we draw our clouds, I'm gonna draw it in a lot of the same way that I drew those mountains. So big hill, little hill, big hill, little hill. Over here, big hill, little hill. If I want to, I can draw a line underneath there. I could fill it in too if I want, and I don't have to make it a blue sky. Could be another color of sky. All right, and last but not least, well, not exactly last, but let's draw the. Let's go ahead and draw color in that mountain. Using my fine point for the spaces between those snow caps. Notice I'm still trying to make my lines go the same direction.
just to add a little texture to those waves. I'm going to get my turquoise and I'm just going to draw some little hooks in turquoise. That's my drawing in a wave, of a wave. This has been Sarah Rushla on behalf of Baker Hunt Art and Cultural Center here to tell you to stay safe, stay creative, and I'll see you next time.